Hi, my name is Greg Fell, I'm Director of Public Health in Sheffield. Um, herd immunity is a concept that crops up a lot in my inbox over the last couple of weeks. Um, and there seems a strong and growing view that we should basically um, rebalance our approach to the strategy um, um, and, and focus on getting the economy going because not getting the economy going carries a lot of harm, um, which is true. Um, similar and parallel to this, I hear lots of interesting stories about people having COVID parties in the same way that we used to have chicken pox parties in the 80s um, uh, and people actively seeking out someone else with symptoms so they can get the illness and they can they can have the symptoms get over it develop immunity um, um, and some of that possibly related to the concept of herd immunity so um, the, the line of argument um, is that we've got the balance wrong between protecting individuals and protecting the economy um, um, and blunt tools that we've imposed um, lockdown um, um, we, we have suppressed the virus there's no doubt about the fact that we've suppressed the virus it, it comes back as we are seeing at the moment um, but in suppressing the virus, we've incurred significant social and economic harm, which will have um, significant downstream impacts. Some of them immediate, some of them some of them lo lo longer term, um, and the that that will be inequitable. Um, the direct impact of the virus is also inequitable. So um, the the counter proposition to the to, to the strategy that, that is one of protecting individuals from harm um, is one of herd immunity. We let the virus take its course. It's attractive. Um, I think it's wrong from a number of reasons. Um, Sweden is the is the current example that that, that you could look at Sweden. They've got it right in Sweden. Um, I'd encourage everyone to look at Sweden, particularly the economic impact and the mortality rate. There was a recent paper paper from Independent Age which summarised that really well and it's very easy to find on the Independent Age website. So my take, herd immunity is a really difficult concept for all sorts of reasons and I think the Prime Minister was very clear um, in his statement to the House of Commons a week ago. Um, um, we can't live in permanent lockdown, we can't let the virus, lift, rip, the virus rip through our communities unchecked so thus we find a middle path. Um, in that Protecting the vulnerable is hugely important. We've seen what the virus can do to those who have medical vulnerabilities and, and the rate of mortality, the rate of admission to intensive care is very, very high. So clearly protecting the vulnerable is important. Protecting the economy is also hugely important and we cannot and are not ignoring either um, because the impact of neglecting either is inequitable. Um, the way in which we live, high density communities, shared housing, our older folk looking after grandkids, etc., um, is probably operationally impossible to really, really shield the vulnerable in the way that we would want 100%, especially given the size of the shielding population, you, certainly more than 20,000 people in Sheffield. So cutting that cohort off from the rest of society, um, one, has its own costs, um, and two, I don't think it's operationally impossible, and I've yet to see a really good example of, of where that works. Um, herd immunity, letting the virus rip through the rip through society, neglects the impact of long COVID on younger people, um, which is in itself a reason to keep transmission as low as possible. Um, I hear lots of stories from youngish working age people who are, had mild symptoms when they had COVID, but now have this phenomenon known as long COVID, and it's very, very debilitating. We know very little about it. Nobody knows how any of that plays out. So I think pre preventing long COVID is in itself a reason to, to keep viral transmission as low as possible. Um, there's a significant cost to herd immunity policy. Mortality rates would be much higher than they are. Um, and I don't think we should be prepared to accept that. Um, nobody knows how long-term uh, long -term immunity post-infection will play out. We just don't have the data at the moment. Um, so um, I think we should be really careful about that one. Herd immunity will develop either through natural infection, and I would encourage, uh, encourage us all to remember that in the order of nine, ten percent of us have had this illness to date, therefore 90 odd percent of us are still susceptible. So the, the course by natural infection is a long, long course. Or vaccination, um, um, we'll probably have a workable vaccine um, early next year is, is my guess. Um, um, but until then, I, I can't see it's a viable option to deliberately push a policy of herd immunity. So yes, we are um, and should be very open about the trade-offs and the big choices, but our approach is to basically uh, not neglect the basics of infectious disease control and to continue to try and balance 
um, the direct impact of a dangerous respiratory virus with the long-term social and economic impact of interventions to control that, that virus. Both of those are needed and will continue to steer that middle path.